Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to Nick's Garage Builds. I'm gonna do something a little bit different today. I'm actually not gonna build anything. I bought something. I bought a battery from Amore. A lot of guys in the Razor community swear by these batteries. They swear by this company. People in the electric motorcycle builds also use them. I've seen tremendous results. This is a 72 volt, uh, 200 amp discharge battery. So it's not a, not a bad battery at all. I just want to take it apart, inspect the build quality to see if they are building batteries as well as it looks on the outside as it's almost perfectly square and it's actually quite a good looking battery. And I want to see the BMS that they're using and in fact they are using the cells that they talk about. I'm excited to actually tear into this thing. It's a little bit hard for me to buy something brand new and then immediately take it apart and it will never be the same looking. but. Uh, I think it will be good for everyone in the community that is on the fence of actually ordering one of these. As you can see, this is a 72 volt Amore. These are the specs on it. So, we're gonna go in and rip into this thing. So I will say that the, the plastic that they use seems to be pretty high quality. This is tape on the inside, so that's interesting. Still looks nice though. So, kind of like I expected, it, there'd be a G40 sheet behind it, which is like a thermal and electrically safe uh, sheeting. This is just your, you know, basic battery insulation cover. This is nice though. I mean, it makes the battery look super nice, keeps everything nice and tight. This is tape, uh, black tape on the outside. So they use that, um, like that shipping tape that's got like the, the mesh in it. Stuff's really strong though. I'm imagining the BMS is on top considering, you know, wires come out there. This stuff's just some thin tape. This was made with uh, lichen cells. This is your, realistically what I would consider what most guys would call the budget build. Um, I think the lichen cells hold up pretty decent from the stuff that I've read. Are they Samsung? No, but they definitely cost about half as much. This is where you want to be careful if you do open up a battery, like you're getting in the danger zone now. All right. That's good. Very typical battery. Kind of got the BMS on top there. Um, it's not the prettiest underneath there, but it's hard to make a battery look pretty in this stage. I'll be honest with you. From the ones I built, it's a pain. You definitely want to, when you're using something to cut it, obviously stay away from the battery as far as you can. Um, this one, I'm going to probably just move it out of the way as much as I can, but it's not looking too easy. So these are four uh, gauge wires, so definitely the biggest wires I've ever put on a battery or had put on a battery as well. Interesting bus bar. That is a lot of, a lot of solder. All right. Bus bars are nice. I do like that spread out. Interested to see this positive bus bar. They do a pretty decent job. They put G40 over the positive side, which is nice because your negative leads got to run uh, over that way. It's not, it's not bad. I mean, I'm, I'm not afraid of it. They don't use a ton of Kapton tape, which is like high voltage insulation tape, but it's not too bad. 
silicone they use is pretty legit. I don't know this BMS by any means. I don't see any markings on it. I wanted to see about this BMS. I don't know the brand. I'll try to figure it out and I'll put the description. Uh, there are plenty of markings here that might tell me what it is, but at least it does say on there it's a 200 amp BMS. I know I was told it's 340 peak, so I am curious to see you know, what, what would be the peak on something like this. Is this 200 amps continuous or does this BMS only put out 200 amps peak? Uh, so hopefully I get good news when I look up all that information uh, and I will put in my description uh, link. If we take down this side, they're using all these new sheets and these are awesome. They have the nickel already welded to the copper. You just lay the sheet down and then you tack on your nickel strips. For us DIY guys, we normally put the nickel strips right over the copper and then uh, weld through the nickel or weld through the copper and bond to the cell. These things are awesome. I would love to get my hands on a set of these because it, they just make for a nice build. So I did want to go over the bus bars real quick, how they attach uh, this parallel or this series pack to the other series pack. They just run two uh, copper bus bars. They appear to be maybe 100 or 200 microns thicker than the copper on the, the copper sheeting. It's actually well done. You know, solder joining it is, is pretty normal practice. It appears to be adequate, but it's, it's nice. It's a nice battery. They did a nice job of running the balance wires. If you look, I mean, they're pretty well routed. I like to normally put a little tape uh, underneath wires that are running across, but I don't think this is a bad building habit, but I always try to insulate every wire as much as possible. But this is me being nitpicky. I mean, this is pretty impressive. They got the tabs bent over, nice, nice solder on there like everyone does. It should never get that hot there. So it, it's, it's honestly great. Another thing I want to point out that I was impressed with is that they use cell holders. This creates a nice gap between the cells. Some people, to if they don't have enough room, they put the cells right next to each other, and that can cause some rubbing and chafing, and then that can lead to a fire. These are nicely done. I was impressed, you know, that they could actually fit this battery in the dimensions I gave them and put them in the cell holders. They definitely did a G40 sheet between the two. So this is a 10S. And this is a 10S, obviously, to make 72 volts is a 20S, which is 20 uh, batteries in series. And then we have eight parallel, which uh, these are 4,000 milliamp hour batteries. So that's eight times four is 32. That's what makes this a 32 amp hour battery. Um, I, the only thing, I don't think this is the same length as this here. It's close. I always make sure that these are the exact same length, but I do like that they space them out. So all the current isn't running, you know, through one wire or two wires. I mean, they got a good decent set of wires there and all the current can go, is distributed between those. You know, the single point discharge, I don't love, but there's really not a whole lot you can do. Eventually it's gonna go down to one anyway. So that isn't the worst thing. Same thing if you look at the positive side, it's nice, they did a nice bus bar. Uh, as you can see, like it's wide, the copper's wide. You know, they got a lot of solder on there. I prefer at the almost bolted connection like that, but if you put enough solder on there, it's fine, as long as it doesn't get too hot. So, it's a nice bus bar. All right, everyone, I hope you found this helpful. If you're on the fence about a Mori battery, I would honestly say that you have absolutely nothing to worry about. This is definitely one of the best built batteries I have seen. You know, they didn't hide anything. They're using lichen cells. I didn't ask for a specific BMS, but it's showing 200 amps. Uh, I will look in to make sure it's not 200 amp peak and it's 200 amp uh, nominal discharge. But I mean, this is a well-built battery and, and everyone should feel pretty good about their purchase. Um, I know for $780, I did not expect this quality at all. Very impressed. Uh, if you guys found this helpful at all, please give me a, you know, a thumbs up or a subscribe is even better. I really appreciate it. And I love doing stuff like this to show everyone what they're buying and hopefully it works out for them. All right, have a good one.